So don't go writing in the comments section, oh, I don't like artificial sweeteners. It's going to kill you and cause cancer. And oh, you don't have enough ants in your diet. It should be a percentage of macros. Shut up. Coach Greg, in today's video, we're going to go over how exactly Derek got shredded. How he got ripped. When Derek was younger, didn't know better, tried the bulk and cut. He ballooned up to 260 pounds, then at the crash diet, lost 70 to 80 pounds just to get back to shredded condition. His advice, don't get fat in the first place. Just not worth it. Bulking and cutting, not the answer. And so admittedly, he used some pharmacology, fat burners and so on to help him get shredded. But in today's video, we're not going over that. We're going to go over the diet hacks that he used to lose the weight and keep it off. As you can see, Derek has not regained all the weight. He's not single digit body fat, but close to it. Somewhere healthy that he can maintain for the rest of his life. He's been able to keep this weight off for multiple years. And so there's a lot that we can learn from Derek. Hacks for sticking to your diet. This is the biggest weakness everyone has. So how can you get lean as hell without cheating on your diet? So he points out that being hungry, starving, wanting to cheat on your diet, that is the biggest reason why diets fail. I agree 100%. If you aren't starving, if you're not hungry, you're halfway to reach your goals. But if you're hungry all the time, you're constantly going to be relying on willpower. And there's only so long that you can use Will Tennyson's willpower to get you to diet to reach your goals. And remember, dieting to get shredded, it's not just about eating healthy. The healthiest diet isn't necessarily the one that's going to get you shredded. If you're eating all healthy foods, but you're always hungry, guess what? You're going to eat more foods and not stick to your diet. So sometimes there are things that people do, foods that they might eat that are not the healthiest, but allows you to stick to your diet. This is not necessarily healthy recommendations. This is not about, once you start getting steep into you know 500 plus calorie deficit, it's no longer about hitting your micronutrient needs adequately. So don't go writing in the comments section, oh, I don't like artificial sweeteners. It's going to kill you and cause cancer. And oh, you don't have enough ants in your diet. It should be a percentage of macros. Shut up. If you want to eat perfectly healthy all the time and have sauteed vegetables in your breakfast because Abby Sharp said so, well, by all means do it. But if you want to learn how Derek got shredded, well, then watch this video. This is strictly for aggressive cutting. So the first thing, getting rid of all your post-workout shakes. Um, I don't know why people still do this in their cutting phases. They still have liquid calories. Why are you drinking protein shakes when you can have protein ice cream? It's way too easy and quick to drink your calories. And so instead of drinking calories, eat them instead. Tip number two, add in diet pop or carbonated beverages. It allows you to feel full, stretch out the stomach and prevent you from overeating. But when you're using carbonated beverages, obviously choose ones that are low in calories. Black coffee is also a very tried and true method for suppressing your appetite and- Tip number three, coffee. Caffeine boosts your metabolism, burn more calories, help you burn fat. Also an appetite suppressant makes you less hungry. So if you're increasing your need, non-exercise activity thermogenesis from drinking coffee, it's going to help you to lose weight. Just be sure not to add in all the creamers and extra calorie items into your coffee. Next thing is sugar-free jello. So this is probably one of the most overlooked diet hacks in my opinion. It's only got about 40 calories per box, tastes sweet and delicious and can help you to feel full. In comparison, if you have almost any other dessert, you're going to be eating multiple hundreds of calories and it makes it hard to be in a deficit. So if you're craving something sweet, go for it. Eat the jello. It's only got 40 calories. And so when Derek gets really hungry and he's in a cut, he consumes the Jello massive bowl. We don't think that it's healthy. Bunch of aspartame, artificial sweeteners, all mixed up in chemicals and so on. It's not healthy, but hey, we're trying to get shredded, trying to be full. And if you're about to eat everything in sight and you can't stop yourself, if you first eat a big, large bowl of Jello, it might be just the fix that you need to prevent you from binging on something else. Next thing is, um, you know, like zero calorie sauces, dressing, syrups, condiment spreads, and dips. Things like Walden Farms chocolate syrups, mocha coffee creamers, salad dressings, mustards, and so on. So if you add these to your foods, it makes the foods taste better, makes you not feel like you're dieting. And so is Walden Farms low calorie dressing and mustard and so on as healthy as full fat dressing that has fats in it? 
No. But if you have a massive salad full of salad dressing, your calories are going to be probably higher than if you ate a cheeseburger. So if you're trying to be full without having too many calories, this is a diet hack you can use. Not saying it's healthy, but is being obese healthy? I didn't think so. I already mentioned the diet, so another thing, sugar-free gum. So this is a good way to, it's like five calories per piece. And tip number six, Derek suggests chewing low calorie gum. Personally, I'm not a fan of this tip. For him, it works. For me, it doesn't work. Once I eat one piece, I want the next one, the next one, the next one. Before you know it, I'm down 10 packs in a day. And those calories, although small, they do in fact add up. There's something about the chewing action for me that makes me want to chew more. So I suggest you experiment. If chewing gum prevents you from eating other things, then that's great. But if it doesn't, if it makes you hungrier, then just don't do it. Next thing is, so I already talked about the salads too. The main thing is have like a giant salad, but don't, you know, put in the garbage in it. Sounds like Coach Greg and Derek diet the exact same way. So many people say, oh, Coach Greg eats this way. Derek eats a totally different way. He totally disagrees with Coach Greg. Are you kidding me? It looks like the exact same way that I diet. Giant salad. Does anyone eat bigger salads than Coach Greg? I probably get all the turkesterone I need from the spinach alone in my diet. Have you seen my massive salads? And so Derek's suggestion, weigh out your salad dressings, weigh out your foods. How do you know how many calories you're actually consuming? And research does support this. On average, people underreport calories by at least 30%. That means most people are consuming 30% more calories than they think. You might be thinking calories in, calories out doesn't work. I'm only eating 2,000 calories a day, not losing weight. But in reality, you're eating closer to 3,000 calories, all because you weren't accurately cracking what you were eating. Next tip, PB2, PB Fit, all the low calorie peanut butters, the powdered peanut butters. Of course. And if you want to step it up even more, make it even taste better, make it taste almost as good as the real thing or better, debatably, Try my peanut butter recipes. I have several of them in my cookbooks and I've got one video showing you exactly how to make it. So just watch the video, make the peanut butter at home. And you'll see it's got four times fewer calories and double the protein. You simply can't go wrong. The next thing, this is one of the most overlooked hacks in my opinion that no one seems to talk about, shirataki noodles. Next, add in shirataki noodles. Low calorie noodles, almost no calories, adds volume to your meals. The more voluminous the meals, the more you're gonna be full. Same idea as why we eat big, massive salads. If you're at like maintenance or in a surplus and you ate these noodles, you'd be like, this is cookbooks. Like, I don't, there's no way I'd eat this. But when you're in a deficit, stuff that normally you think is not that appetizing. And this is a great point that I tell people all the time. When you're dieting, everything tastes better. So you might not think that all these foods taste that good, but once you're dieting and you're in a deficit for a long enough period of time, your taste buds adapt. You learn to like a lot of different foods. When I was a kid growing up, if it wasn't candy chocolate bars or deep fried, I didn't want it. But as I got older and did bodybuilding shows, I quickly learned to love things like tuna fish. Hated tuna when I'm not on a diet, but on a diet, give me my tuna, I love it. So do appreciate the fact that when you're dieting, food tastes that much better and you won't need to eat such high calorie dense foods anymore. Another thing, huge protein ice cream blender container. Imagine not having protein ice cream and being on a diet. How did we do it when we were kids? Looking back to when I first started dieting almost 30 years ago, we didn't have all these things. Didn't have protein ice cream, low calorie condiment sauces and stuff. We had salt and pepper. And then I remember discovering Mrs. Dash. That was amazing. And then Molly McButter. Nowadays, we have it easy. But funny, obesity levels just keep going up. So much easier to diet now than 25 years ago, but more people are weight now. Do you know why? Because people are freaking swiping left and right all the time, playing on freaking computers, using social media. No one does anything in the real world. So the amount of activity, the steps per day, it's just not happening anymore. No one goes to the gas station, flirts with women anymore. They sit at home on their computers doing nothing. Can't go out, be active. Not to mention this time of the, the demic that's going on. You can't go out and do shit. It sucks. So people are lazy and they're making excuses. Love yourself. Love yourself right now because, oh, it's that time of the cove. You can't go out of the house. So just sit on the couch, need a bunch of shit and forgive yourself. That acceptance. Or you can get off the couch and do shit. Next thing, high protein diet. So 
you know, some people, they want to argue about how much protein you need. Oh, one gram per pound is too much or it's too little. The next tip, eat a shit ton of protein. Yeah, we all know like one gram of protein per pound of body weight. But honestly, the more protein you eat, the more full you're going to be. But you're saying, no, fat is more satiating. Well, technically you're right, but fat has nine calories per gram in comparison, protein only has four. Also, there's a higher thermic effect. In other words, you burn more calories when you consume protein when you consume fat. Why? Because it takes more energy to convert protein to body fat than fat into body fat. Fat already looks like body fat more so than protein. And so you will in fact burn off more calories eating protein than you will eating fat. Swapping out red meat for white meat slowly, but still hitting your macros. So rather than eating fatty cuts of steaks, choose chicken breasts or fish instead. And why would you be consuming full fat dairy products? You don't need the extra calories. Cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, choose fat-free cottage cheese, fat-free Greek yogurt. It'll save on calories and allow you to eat in a deficit while still eating as much volume as you want. Getting meat that is harder to chew. So if you have a steak versus ground beef, obviously you're gonna chew the steak longer, which not only causes your body to release more hydrochloric acid and actually digest it more properly, um, and absorb the nutrients to promote satiety. You probably heard and know that it takes a while for your body to recognize that you're full. That if you chew slowly or it takes you longer to eat something, that your body recognizes you're full. This is why I strongly suggest that as a snack, you consume popcorn. It's going to take you a lot longer to eat popcorn than other things like chips. And so by eating popcorn, and yes, you can eat several bags for the most part, gives your body plenty of time to recognize the calories that have come into the body and tell signals to the brain that you're full. Next, add more volume to your meals and or fiber. Fiber takes a lot longer to digest and it doesn't have as many calories, between zero and two calories depending on the fiber that you're eating. This is why my cookbooks are so effective. Taste amazing, you can eat large meals and be full. When you eat the regular meals that you're eating, the ones you eat at the restaurants, fast food and so on, small portions have a lot of calories and if you keep eating them, you're going to be in a surplus. If you eat from my cookbook, you still get to eat foods that taste amazing but they are lower in calories and allow you to feel full. And the bonus is they're high in protein and often very high in fiber. One of the biggest mistakes of cutting is guys who cut their calories way too aggressively off the bat and then they essentially encourage metabolic adaptations far quicker than they would have otherwise had occurred should they have cut slower. And a very important tip, don't starve yourself at first. Do the minimum required to lose the weight at first. So often people get caught up trying to lose five or 10 pounds a week right away and they overdo it, they over diet. They've lost muscle, slowed their metabolism and before they know it, they're back eating in surplus again, yo-yo dieting year after year. Rather than doing that, do small changes, changes you can stick to for the rest of your life, slowly lose the weight without suffering and when you get to the point that you're comfortable, you're happy with your physique, just eat at maintenance and main gain from there. Typically, I always had better results when I reduced my calories slowly and increased my ex calorie energy expenditure slowly too, rather than just crash dieting. So please don't crash diet. Don't start doing 10 hours cardio a week and eating in a 2000 calorie deficit. It's not the way, it's gonna to lead to burnout. And that's why some people say, don't diet, it leads to weight gain. It only leads to weight gain if you're over dieting and can't stick to your diet. A slow, easy diet, that's a diet that can work for the rest of your life. And that's it. Hope it helped. If you're interested, please get one of my cookbooks. It'll help you stay on a low calorie diet that you can follow for the rest of your life. Also, supplements, harder than last time. Click the link in the description. Please watch the bloops. Don't forget about those. Watch at least one. Come on, watch one. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. And until next time, I am out.